You're back for the second night. Uh, I, I want to start by saying thank you and congratulations to our Jazz Combos program. I was uh, parked on the back wall back there uh, for just a wonderful night last night. So how about a hand for the, U the UNC Jazz Combos last night? Uh, we started off the show with a, uh, a shuffle. It's a tune that I co-wrote along with trumpeter Imer Santiago. Uh, many moons ago, <laughs> I'll say it that way, I, I, I got a great call almost 10 years ago to produce a record for Emer, And uh, we started uh, putting tunes together and we kind of landed on a Blakey-esque shuffle that always kind of has a good energy for starting the show entitled Girls' Night Out. We're going to continue with a composition by one of my favorite, I would call him an architect of music. Um, he's a pianist and composer um, that since I was about this tall, my grandmother, who was also a great pianist, would always call Bruce Dudley the man with the pretty hands because he had just his posture at the piano, unlike mine, uh, <laughs> was just uh, always impressive to her. And uh, Bruce Dudley uh, is still, I actually was fortunate enough to play with him Saturday night, uh, this past Saturday night when I was home in Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, this is a tune of his that he wrote really about his last first date. Right? Um, it's a tune that uh, he wrote uh, called Sailing with Sandra. And uh, Sandra Dudley is his amazing wife, who's an incredible vocalist. Um, but this was their first date, upstate New York, um, just going sailing and hanging out. And uh, he wrote this tune afterwards. It's entitled Sailing with Sandra. Thank you. 
How many of y'all were here last night? Quite a bit. Great. So, uh, as is my habit, uh, we are fortunate here um, through the, uh, the work of uh, the great Jim Ketch, my, my predecessor as far as the, uh, the maestro of this ensemble, um, and then the work of my colleagues, uh, Dr. Steven Anderson, our fearless leader, uh, to have one of the most robust guest artist programs I've ever seen at a collegiate level. Um, when, when I uh, was coming, we were talking about putting the program together, and he said, well, we'll we're going to have uh, you know, two guest artists. And I said, oh, that's great. You get two guest artists in a, in a year. And he said, no, 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 that's just one semester. I went, whoa, that's awesome. Uh, and so we'll have four across the year. Um, the guest artists that we are fortunate to have uh, with us this week is absolutely incredible, an incredible human being, an incredible musician. Um, I, I always told myself, and I've hit that point where uh, I, I, I thought I'm never going to start an intro by saying, you know, when I was in high school coming up, so I'm not going to say that. But I will say that uh, throughout my youth, as it were, I'm smiling right now, you can't tell that. Um, you know, there was an ensemble that really brought jazz back uh, to the community. And, the, and, and for me, it was the community that I grew up in. And uh, part of that meant not only bringing jazz back, but bringing the trombone back. And all of a sudden, somewhere uh, in my youth, you know, saxophone was getting a lot of attention, but all of a sudden there were these cats on trombone and, and, and uh, two in particular that, uh, that stood out from the Jazz and Lincoln Center area. And I know from my twin brother, who's a trombonist as well, um, that just changed everything. And uh, this, this cat is, uh, is one of those dudes. Um, and, and just we're so fortunate to have him here. Please welcome to the stage, Ron Westray. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
because I know y'all want to hear music, but this is a Charles Mingus classic called uh, Better Get Hit in Your Soul. Something your grandma tell you down this part. <laughs> Better get hit in your soul, son. And that's what he meant. And so we're going to do kind of a, a, usually he does it real frenetically and fast. You can barely understand what's going on. So we're going to bring it on down to, uh, let's say, Southern Presbyterian tempo.
you. Get that. So if you know me, there's a couple of things I always say, and one of them is, if it's worth doing, it's worth not rushing through. Think about it. Think about it. And uh, tonight, we're not rushing through a lot, right? Uh, if it feels good, we're, we're going to sit in it for a little bit. Um, how about a hand for the incredible Ron Westray? I want to take uh, just a second. Uh, to, to brag, really, uh, uh, because I would say my friends are cooler than yours, but I'll say my students are cooler than yours. But they're yours, especially. I was, I was, I was actually sitting in the back next to uh, one of our pianist's dads. I was standing in the back last night because there weren't seats. And uh, I, I realized that I kind of had the same look on my face that he did, which was kind of awesome. Um, I feel so blessed and fortunate that I get to work with such amazing young musicians. I want to show you this. This is a normal big band score. This is, you know, if you're looking at that, you're probably going, wow, that looks like a lot of, not a lot of paper for a lot of music, right? Um, this, this is one of the charts that Ron Westray sent us. <laughs> one. This is one, one score, right? Um, by the page count, I'm gonna go, this is uh, 45, 47 pages, right? Uh, I presented this ensemble with a question after our last concert. I said, so, uh, you know, I, I, you know I, I talked with Maestro Westray and, uh, you know, he sent a few charts. He said he's got things that the bands normally uh, play for college bands. And he said, you know, just in case I was feeling froggy, you know, he, you know, I could pick one of these four charts that he wrote for Jazz and Lincoln Center. I went to the band, I said, so here's what he said. And, and the band looked at me and they went, wait, he's got four charts? Let's do four charts. And I thought, I'm lucky that I get to do this, right? Uh, you've heard two of them. You haven't heard this one yet. This is our closer. <laughs> but. Um, but they're all right about this length, as the band will tell you. Um, it, it's been an inspiring experience for me as, as a human, as a player, as an educator, to see uh, such young musicians tackle not just pro level, we're talking jazz at Lincoln Center charts, right? Um, I just want to introduce this band and then we'll do a, a long round of applause. Uh, on the saxophones, Adam Doyle. On baritone saxophone, on tenor two, Saman Sahibi. On lead alto, Alex Upton, making her debut with this ensemble, and I'm going to brag on her because I want to say it's three rehearsals. Yeah, three. She came in and she's saving us. She came in three rehearsals ago. Adriana Kirk, and next to her, Jason Blondell on tenor saxophone, lead tenor, the saxophone section. <laughs> on trombone, on bass trombone, Patrick Deloach. Third trombone, Bruce McRae. On the end here close to me, Liam Hansen gets me every time. I want to say Neeson so bad. Liam Hansen, uh, he also has a specific set of skills. And Jordan Schurz on lead trombone, the trombone section. <laughs> These are actually the moments that conductors lose the most sleep about. Um, on fourth trumpet, Tomer Kanon Goldhagen. Trumpet section's making me work tonight. Check this out. Third trumpet, Neil Pierre-Louis. Second trumpet, Lucas Hendershot. And on lead, Alexander Eyscheid. How about it for the trumpet? Way back at the Congas currently, that's Daniel Azanov. On the drum set next to him, that's Connor LaMontagne. Yes. <laughs> on guitar, uh, Will Dominici. Um, we are fortunate to have two incredible bassists in this band, Caitlin Petta and Christopher Law. We also have two incredible pianists, Marvin Kuntz and Drew Nora.
We're actually on this next tune, uh, we're gonna feature our lead alto saxophonist, Alex Upton, and uh, we will we'll be joined by Deanna Garst, who's gonna be helping us out in the saxophone section. So, I'll tell you while, while they set up. Um, I remember in some, somewhere in my 20s uh, yesterday, I, I thought that tunes are kind of like, I remember thinking to myself, man, tunes are kind of like kids. Like, you know, it's like you play a tune and over the years it just grows up. And then you get a little bit older and you realize like tunes, tunes are not at all like kids, right? Um, but it's still a, a, a really special thing to hear uh, your own music in the hands of your students, right? Um, standing back there with Marvin's dad last night, I realized tunes are nothing like kids, right? Students maybe, but not tunes, right? Uh, this tune that we're gonna continue with is entitled Manhattan Grace. And uh, it's got a, a church sound to it too, but it may be a different sort of sound. Uh, when I was a, a master student in New York in Manhattan School of Music, uh, anybody that's ever been in New York, you know there's like, imagine the most calm, relaxing place in New York City. Right, that last part changes that whole thing, right? If you've been in New York, you're like, wait a minute, that, that doesn't exist. Um, for me, I, it, was, it existed at a place called Manhattan Grace Tabernacle. And I remember when I went home, I was sitting at the, the little beat up upright piano that was in our house, and I was talking with my granny about Manhattan Grace Tabernacle. And this tune, while we were talking, I was just sitting at the piano playing, um, and this tune just kind of, came, I'll put it that way. And I, I, I actually like, for, for longest, only wrote it down when I had to teach it to the band. But sometimes a, a tune just comes and it sticks with you and stays with you. Um, it's resurfacing and I'm excited to hear what Alex does with it tonight. This is Manhattan Grace.
How about it for Alex Efton? It, it, it's a beautiful thing when uh, your students and this is this entire band. I feel like I'm a fan. I feel like you know, I, it's it's great when you get to just be a fan of your students. You know, um, we're going to continue with another original of mine that I wrote for a, a really wonderful Latin jazz septet by the name of El Movimiento that I was fortunate to co-lead along with uh, trumpeter Yamer Santiago and percussionist Giovanni Rodriguez in Nashville, Tennessee. This tune uh, celebrates a friendship of mine that's probably 20 years old at this point um, with uh, a really, really uh, awesome supportive spirit, uh, Marisol Leboy. Uh, Marisol was a New Yorican from Brooklyn. And, and that, if you're thinking, oh, that's just like somebody from New York, it's a whole different thing. It's a whole different thing. And then we're trying to capture a bit of her playful spirit with his tune. It's entitled Brooklyn in La Casa, uh, because whenever Marty walked in, she'd say, Brooklyn in the house. So we'll give you a little bit of Brooklyn, uh, New Yorican style. This will start with a, a wonderful intro uh, from our bassist, Caitlin Petta. Thank you. 
we're going to bring our special guest back for these last two. Um, I, I see people leaving, and so I'm just going to say you're, you don't know what you're about to miss. Um, this, this title gives you a little bit of insight. Don't be afraid. The clown's afraid, too. We, uh, we, we found this chart right around Halloween, and I'm just going to say it was perfect. And uh, if you have friends that are leaving, tell them what they missed.
What a vision, what an arrangement. And how about it for Ron Wester? So you, you've heard three uh, incredible level charts uh, pulled off by this band. And uh, <laughs> we've got one more for you. It's, a, it's, it's one of the most challenging and inventive. It, it, it actually, this arrangement takes me back to my, my days of dread of playing for the David Baker big band in Indiana. Because David would come in with these things, he'd say, yeah, so um, we're gonna do a countdown by John Coltrane. He'd go, man, that's a hard tune. And then he'd go, okay, and then uh, you know, we'll have the saxophone section, everybody will switch and play tenor, and they'll all play John Coltrane solo. And then he'd say, and then, uh, and then you know, Rassan, you take a solo. And I'm like, I'm not playing. I, you know? Um, this is, this is another level still because it, it's, uh, it, it finishes with John Coltrane's solo on Straight No Chaser, but not just on the saxophone where all of those notes make a little bit of sense, but spread out through the entire band. Uh, so you're gonna hear, uh, once we hit the exit ramp on this tune, just hold on to your seats um, and, and try to enjoy it um, for us, say it that way. Uh, this is Straight No Chaser, and before that, I just want to give the floor to Maestro Ron Westry. Thank you. Thank you, Rasan. Let's hear it for Professor Barber uh, doing an incredible, incredible job with these students. I mean, this program has always just been amazing, going back to Jim Ketch, and, uh, who established a, a good deal of this program, uh, and now the new generation with Rasan. And, you know, I was just telling, uh, oh, by the way, my high school band director just decided to jump in the car with me and drive up here when I came up here. Willie Lyle <laughs> and Myron Thomas. They're just living vicariously through me right now. Oh, how the, you know, you know, student has become teacher now, you know. It happens. But yeah, thank you, Bob. Thank, th thank you, Bob, for giving me this moment. This is just a moment um, uh, to say, um, I wrote a book. <laughs> it's called Life in Reverse. It's the story of my life. Um, and it starts in the present time, and it goes back 30 years to when I was these guys' age. The subtitle is Tales of a Very Stable Narcissist. And, uh, 
Life in Reverse, and I would love to sell some copies um, because it just feels good to uh, produce something and be able to get some returns on it. And it's just an amazing book, okay? Not because I wrote it, but because I like books. And so it kind of reads just like all the great books that I like to read. And so uh, I kind of ended up producing a book that sounds and looks and feels a lot like all the great books I've enjoyed. So please um, purchase a copy for me, from me in the lobby, and I will be uh, very happy about that. And Myron Thomas here in the gray will, will uh, pre precede me in the lobby while I get packed up, and then I'll be out there and I can sign some autographs. So it's also on Amazon, but you wouldn't be able to get an autograph on Amazon. So let's do this. Okay, thank you very much, life in reverse. Thank you all for being here. Straight no chaser, uh, a very important distinguish, <laughs> distinguishing factor when you're at the bar. Straight no chaser, Thelonious Monk.
How about it? That's the UNC Jazz Band. And our special guest, Ron Westray. Thank you guys so much for sticking around for the late set. We'll see you next time.